Hi guys, Umbuhay! Welcome back to our channel. This is Efraim, your Hardinerong Kapitbahay. It's another day and another plan to discuss anong pang hinihintay mo. Tara, samahan mo ako at magkwentuhan tayo. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. This is Efraim, your Hardinerong Kapitbahay. Today, we are going to, uh, to have another plant that you will really like. But first, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and give your comments below. For today, we are going to talk about Chloropytum comosum. So this is also known as the air plant, uh, airplane plant, uh, ribbon plant, and spider ivy. Or tinatawag na rin minsan na spider plant. So this particular plant is known as uh, uh, origin from the South African region. Nang ating, eh, syempre, South Africa. So marami talaga mga halaman na ating makikita doon. And it had just happened na siguro we are able to culture this particular plant sa ating mga garden, sa ating mga greenhouse. Kaya meron tayong ganito even dito sa ating, sa ating bansa. Okay. So spider plant, as you can see, produce a rosette and long thin art foliages. So as you can see, um, itong particular na plant na to, nagpiproduce siya ng mga, ng mga pops niya by this particular um, way. So mahaba yung kanya, meron siyang slender na stem-like structure tapos meron siya mga maliliit na mga plantlets na pinoproduce dito. And of course, ang very, ang very significant about this particular plant is maganda yung kanyang pinaka-polage at meron siyang uh, stripes na, na, na green at saka na, uh, na white at the center. Yung iba naman, meron silang um, white naman yung nasa gitna, ah, sa gilid tapos yung iba naman, yung nasa center naman ay yung color green. So, uh, maraming ganitong klase. I think there are three of them na, na spider plant. Okay? So, uh, in this particular plant, this, is, this house plant is a very easy to grow house plant. And very special siya kasi pwede mo siyang ilagay as part of the hanging garden katulad nito. Okay? So, nakalagay nga siya sa paso pero ginawa natin siya ng, as a hanging plant. Okay? So, if you want to keep this plant, of course, uh, maganda siya ilagay sa ating desk o kaya minsan sa loob ng ating bahay. And one of the most beneficial about this particular plant is that it will definitely reduce the indoor pollutants that we have inside our house. So, syempre, maganda siyang uh, ilagay sa ating loob ng bahay, especially if you want to have a clean air inside our house. Kasi, alam niyo sa paligid natin, we have some materials that are actually emitting carbon dioxide and I think this plant is the best plant to um, to maintain the yung pinaka yung 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 to clean up yung ating mga indoor pollutants. So the question now is paano ba natin kailang alagaan ng ating uh, spider plant? Okay. So of course uh, kahit na siya ay madaling alagaan, there are some requirements that we have to complete uh, accomplish or gawin para ma masigurado natin na siya ay mabubuhay. Kasi syempre, uh, we really want to have this particular plant na dumami at saka syempre ay um, maging maganda pa rin sa paningin ng mga tao who visit us atin, especially uh, after this pandemic, syempre. Okay, so first thing first is we have to know ano pa yung right soil conditions for this particular plant. So the spider plant really love a soil-based and well-draining potting mix. So syempre, uh, meron siyang konting loam soil, definitely, kasi... Uh, since na ang atin namang uh, air plant o yung spider plant natin talaga ay uh, kailangan niya ng nutrients at saka hindi naman talaga siya nabubuhay as an air plant. So, kailangan niya ng magandang klase ng soil and preferably dapat ay loam. Pero, uh, minsan kasi ang loam soil is uh, nagko nagko-consume siya ng maraming water. So, we have to reduce that particular water by adding up some perlite or pumice rocks dun sa ating mga, mga loam soil para ma-increase naman natin yung drainage. Kasi alam naman natin that when you use that particular um, soil na nag-absorb or nagko-contain ng mar masyadong maraming water, the tendency of that is root rotting. So we don't, that, uh, we don't want that to happen. Of course, um, um, we have to increase also the moisture pero hindi masyadong basa. Humbaga. Okay, and of course, uh, they don't like yung atmosphere o yung conditions na masyado siyang dry at masyado siyang wet. Now, the problem with this is actually reflected also dun sa kanyang pinaka-itsura. Pag masyadong dry ang isang halaman, the tendency or the dry yung ating spider plant is nagkakaroon siya ng, ng dead or ng natawag natin brownish yung pinaka-root, uh, yung pinaka-tip ng kanyang dahon. That's an indication that we have to water our plants. Okay? 
So dahil nga ang condition natin ngayon ay mainit, so the tendency of that is medyo maapektuhan talaga yung ating spider plant, especially if this spider plant is um, nasa labas ng ating bahay. Okay. Another condition that we have to look into is the light. Okay, so the light. We have to keep this plant in a bright to moderate indirect sunlight. Ibig sabihin lang nun, enough na siguro yung ating house plant na spider plant na nakalagay malapit sa ating mga window. Okay? And na nakakakuha siya ng enough sunlight. Hindi natin siya pwede lagay sa labas talaga, na-exposed talaga sa total direct sunlight. Because it will definitely uh, receive yung tinatawag nating um uh, Mag hindi magandang conditions, it will brown the color or it will burn the color or the leaves of our spider plant and we don't want that to happen. So, uh, they do not appreciate direct and hot sunlight because they could burn their leaves. Okay? Um, another thing that we have to look also is kailan ba natin or when are we going to repot this particular uh, spider plant? Of course, This particular spider plant, medyo malago na siya, very lush, lush pool na yung kanyang condition. But, um, it's not enough na ganito siya karami, or it's not enough na tingnan lang natin yung physical appearance niya. We have to look also yung condition doon sa ilalim, or yung kanyang soil. We have to check kung uh, naka-root bound na ba yung ating uh, pinaka-spider plant. Because that is the only thing that we have to look into, especially if we want to repot our plant. Okay? Now, usually, uh, we have to plan to repot a spider plant about uh, every other year. Ibig sabihin, if we're going to repot this today, dapat uh, two years, uh, no, not two years, okay? La, la, uh, next year nga tayo repot, then the other year, tayo repot na natin siya. Ganun ang condition natin. Okay, now in terms of the temperature and humidity, we have to maintain the average room temperature for this particular uh, plant. Uh, temperature and humidity. So, the temperature that we have to maintain for this plant is medyo uh, malamig ng konti, kumbaga. So, yung 13 to 27 degrees Celsius is the right temperature for this plant. And of course, we are able to meet that temperature, especially kung nasa loob siya ng ating bahay. Pero kung nasa labas siya, well, that will be now our problem. Kasi, ano uh, nakaraan, actually, I think there are uh, conditions na nag-51 degrees Celsius tayo. Napaka-init nun. Uh, if we're going to put this one outside, maluluto ang ating spider plant. So if I were you, we could keep this spider plant siguro sa loob muna ng ating bahay. Okay. Uh, in terms of the humidity, we have also the right humidity, especially kung sa loob ng bahay natin siya ilalagay. So hindi masyadong dry yung ating air, pero hindi naman siya masyadong basang-basa yung ating air. Okay. So, uh, fertilizer. Of course, we could put some fertilizer in this particular plant. Twice a month, okay? Twice a month, pwede natin siyang mag, pwede tayo mag-fertilize in order to support yung kanyang growth, especially kung we would like to increase the amount of uh, leaves ng ating spider plant. Kasi itong ating spider plant, uh, the only, one of the things na inaabangan natin is dumami yung kanyang pinaka, pinaka dahon at magkaroon siya ng mga offsets na katulad dito. Kasi that is already an indication na healthy ang ating spider plant. Now, but watch out. Kailangan din na hindi over-fertilize. Uh, uh, hindi tayo nag-over na pag-fertilize ng ating mga plant. Kasi syempre, may chance na masunog din yung ating pinaka-base ng ating spider plant. And of course, hindi din siya maganda. Okay. Now, in terms of the pests and diseases and other problems, so the spider plants are prone to tip burn, yung sinasabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, because um, if the temperature or if the, if the soil is dry, so that is an indication na meron tayong problema. Kung mababa yung humidity ng ating environment, root tip, uh, yung browning ng root tip din, kung merong salt or merong salt yung ating, ating soil or mataas yung salt uh, components ng ating soil, or meron tayong uh, chemicals. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, uh, we have to lessen siguro or we have to be watchful dun sa ating amount ng fertilizer na ilalagay. Kasi it will, the, one of the indications na, may, na meron tayong problema regarding with our spider plant is that the root tip are burning or not, the root tip are turning into brown color. Okay? So in order for us to avoid that, well, so we have to have a checklist. So checklist, Oh, yan ba ay uh, nadilagan ko ba yan? Slightly moist ba yan? Uh, nagdagay ba ako ng fertilizer? Sumobra ba yung fertilizer na binigay ko? Or 
uh, mabababa ang humidity. So, we have to increase it a little bit. So, those are the things that we have to look into. Okay? So, pero uh, as a recommendation for the fertilizer, enough na muna tayo sa paggamit ng mga commercially made na mga fertilizer. I would address, I would say, na siguro we could use some of those organic material for our fertilizer. Okay? Now, of course, we have to avoid also some fluorinated or fluoridated or chloro chlorinated water, yung gali sa tap water. So, if I were you, para makatipid tayo, we could get the sun or the, the water dun sa ating mga rain water. So, that would be a good um, good material para ipandilig sa ating water. Or, kung hindi talaga natin may iwasan, we have to use the tap water, we have to make the water, siguro, ipass muna natin siya within 24 hours bago natin siya idilig. Of course, uh, medyo mataas yung work, pero, Kung ang equivalent naman ay maganda yung ating halaman, that will be a very nice um, thing for our spider plant. Okay. Now, in terms of yung mga tinatawag nating mga, mga ano, mga, um, yung mga insects natin. Of course, with this particular plant, since na siya ay nasa loob ng ating bahay, we cannot do away with our, um, spa, uh, with our, um, this, uh, insects or pests. So, syempre, this one could be, uh, Siyempre, meron tayong tatawag ng bugs and of course, some scales that pwede tumira doon sa ating mga halaman. And we don't want that to happen. So, uh, we have to check. We have to check. Especially if one or two of our plants is already having this particular pest. So, we have to be watchful on that one. Okay? So, ilayo na natin or i-isolate na natin yung plants na merong pest. Okay? So, take note about that. Okay. Now, in terms of the propagation, as you can see, as I've told you a while ago, marami siyang upsets and that's an indication of a healthy uh, spider plant. Well, hindi mo pwedeng basta-basta i-cut yung ating spider plant kasi it will die. Okay, mamatay agad siya. So, uh, so, there are some of the things na, na in-interview ko, tinanong sila, how are they able to propagate this particular spider plant? So, one thing na lumabas, na most common among them is, binababayaan lang nila <laughs> yung ating mga mga offsets na tumutong or mag-root sa lupa. Okay? Now, sir, uh, the problem with that is kung siya ay nakahanging plant. So, yung iba, nilalagay lang talaga nila sa soil, sa, sa pinaka, pinaka, pinaka soil. And let this offset move down sa ating ground. So, yung iba naman ay uh, nilalagay nila ng soil. I really don't know how they do it. Pero, in this case is, kailangan yung ating mga offsets ay magkaroon or magkaroon, mag-anchor siya ng by themselves sa lupa para doon siya ngayon mag-get or kumuha ng kanyang nutrients. So, yung iba, kung gusto nila mag-propagate, they have to maintain or they have to put this particular uh, spider plant sa ibabaw ng lupa. So, lupa mismo. Para doon siya maglagay ng kanyang mga offsets. Okay? So, yon So, until such time na tumubo yung ugat, then naging independent na yung ating mga offsets, that is the time na ikakat nila yung kanilang mga, mga stems na katulad nito. Okay? So, um, okay, uh, what else? Um, so, in that case, doon na natin pwede ihawala yung ating mga, 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 mga pops doon sa kanyang mother plant. Yun. Okay, so, uh, if you have some questions regarding with this one, napakagano nito, pero as you can see, yan, meron na siyang cutting roots there, okay? So, yan, yan, yan. Maybe, siguro, I could do some experiment regarding with this one. So, I could put here, uh, ilagay ito sa isang, sa isang paso, so, hindi ko muna siya, I, I, uh, no, I, I, uh, hang. So, I would rather have siguro uh, some soil like this one. So, ito. So, lalagay ko muna siya doon. So, just like that. I don't know kung nyo ha. So, yan. Lalagay ko lang doon. So, let that roots bore the soil. Tapos, doon na ngayon siya lalaki. Or doon na ngayon siya kukuha ng kanyang nutrients. Okay. So, in that way, I would say na pwede na siya mag-reproduce. Okay. Uh, this plant, of course, it has some flowers, uh, pero ang pinakamagandang way para siya ay magpropagate is through the offsets. Okay? Yun ang pinakamaganda sa kanya. Okay? So, guys, I think that's all, folks. Uh, you're, you're, you're watching Planting with Effort Grace. Please watch and subscribe again to our YouTube channel. And also, please visit our epic page, si Marigracia Tanglihim na Hardin. Okay? So, see you again for another planting usapan in our next session. Thank you and goodbye!